Today I'm going to show you how to use an old CD to make a circle weaving. So the first thing you'll need to do is make your warp strings. And if you have a skein of yarn like this, you can unwrap the yarn from this end. I prefer you use the loose end and pull that yarn out. Or if you have a ball of yarn, please find the end. And you're going to need to unravel some of this so that you have enough to make your warp strings. And then the silver side is going to be the front where we do the weaving and the label will be the back. That way it will look a little bit more interesting when your weaving is done. So I'm gonna thread this through the hole. And then on the back side, I am going to tie a double knot. This way I can get started with my warp strings. And the warp strings are gonna be that part that holds all your weaving together. So if you need someone to hold that while you make the knot, ask for help. And then I'm gonna do about six rulers length, and you can do more than this if you're going to do more. I'm gonna make about 19 warp strings. When we do a circle weaving, you have to have an odd number. So if you're planning on doing more than 19 of these, you will need more than six ruler lengths. So to do a ruler length, I hold it, slide it down, four, five, six. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit more just to be safe. I like to have a little extra in case something doesn't work out. And then anytime you're done with your yarn, roll it back up neatly so it doesn't turn into a big tangle. So now I'm going to continue making my warp strings and I'm going to be looping it through the middle and pulling this long length all the way through. As you start thinking that you have enough, in order to remind yourself that you have to have an odd number, put them together in pairs, and you should have one left over. I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple more since I have some extra string, but reminding yourself that pairs, and then you have one left over, will ensure that your weaving will work. Okay, so I have my pairs and I have one left over. I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna tie it on to the back side. And Mrs. Hayes forgot an important step. You should have your name and class on the back. You're gonna need a Sharpie to do that. Then I'm gonna take my loose end and tie it on to the warp string next to me, next to the, um, the one that I just finished. So I'm gonna loop that through, looks like a pretzel, pull that tight. And again, double check that you have an odd number. So you should have all pairs and then one single one left. And I always think tying it another time is a good idea. So again, I'm gonna loop it through, around and behind pull that tail in tight. This extra you can cut off, or you could also keep it if you're planning on hanging this up. This makes a nice loop. Since I don't know yet, I think I'm gonna cut part of it off and I'll leave part of this tail hanging and I'll just tuck it in behind in case I want to hang it up later. Now I'm going to spread out my warp strings, make sure they're not overlapping. And the next thing that I am going to do is choose my first color that I want to start weaving with. When we weave, it's a good idea to have, I would say no more than two ruler lengths at a time. Otherwise it can get very tangly. So it's okay if you have a short amount because you can add a new color. To get started, 
I am going to take my yarn and choose one of the warp strings and I'm going to tie a double knot. So I knot it once, I'm making an X, I loop that short end around and through, I pull it tight. Now if this little tail is bothering you, you can cut it. Be very careful so you do not cut your knot or your warp string. Or you can also leave it and we can tuck it back in. I'll cut part of it off and I'll show you how to tuck it later. Now you can start weaving in any direction that you like. You can weave this way or this way. We're going to use the end and you're going to start following a pattern. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, and then every now and then this loop will need to be pulled tight so that you can start getting your weaving. Now because the slippery uh, plastic of the, the CD will make your warp strings move, you may every now and then have to readjust these. If it's really bothering you, you can put a piece of tape across the back and that will also help hold it in place. So now I need to look back. I went under this, so I go over, under, and we're going to continue following that pattern all the way around our weaving. Think of it like skip counting. Once you get to a couple inches left of your color, you're going to tie a new color on. To do that, you're going to make an X with your strings, and the one that's on the top, we're going to twist it around and under. It's kind of like the first knot you make when you tie your shoes. Then we're going to do that again. So make another X. Now the one on top, we twist it around and through that opening and we pull it tight. Notice I use both hands to pull that tight. You can go ahead and leave these and we can tuck those in later or you can also cut them. So if we're tucking them in later, you can tuck them in underneath warp strings, or you can also cut them carefully above the knot. Now, some of you may prefer to have a guide or a little needle, so I've cut these plastic needles out of container lids. So you thread it, and you're going to hold it like this. <clears throat> so I'm gonna hold it over this little tail end and then I could, this can help me direct, and sometimes you can even line up more than one of your warp strings at a time. So some of you might prefer this. Some of you might find this harder than just using your hand. I'll let you choose. I would say try it both ways. You might be surprised. You might really like the little guiding needle. It might drive you, drive you nuts. So I'll let you decide. Then we're going to continue weaving. And you can decide if you just want to do one loop of a color, if you want to do several loops, that can add to your design. And I want to leave some of the shiny CD showing. So whenever you get to the end, whenever you're done weaving, you're going to tie this on to one of the warp strings. So I'm gonna loop it like I'm about to weave it, but I'm gonna hold that loop and I'm gonna tuck this back around and through. And I'm gonna use my other hand to hold this in place while I pull it tight. And that will make a little knot. Then what we're gonna do, you can cut part of this off. And I find that it's helpful to use something like this, the needles. And I'm going to either tuck it back in behind the weavings or I can even tuck it into what I've already woven. So I'm just hiding it. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna tuck this one back towards the white and then just wrap it in underneath what I've already woven. 
Um, so I have this extra yarn if I wanted to make a loop so I could hang this up. I'll tie that onto one of the other warp strings. I'm always going to do a double knot. Then it can hang up. This could be also a fun project to use one of the um, tassels. And that's in another video.